check one. Really? Okay. It scares me. It's very busy over there. This one? Hello, hello. Okay, good. All right, it's time to come on into the room. What you guys are in the room? You're you're good students. Oh no. I won't be doing a dance on the table. Check, check, check. I can only imagine. <laughs> so I think Brian is going to be hurting people um, out of the bar. So there is a little thing here. So if, to my understanding, the live stream is going. So I miss his promptness. I just can't help it. That's the way I am. Oh, so here's the deal. So I think the, did you say the live stream is going? Uh -huh. So hello, live streamers. Everybody say hello to the live streamers. Hello. So to all the live streamers, there is a bar kind of around the corner, and that's where I think a few of our members are. But we have pizza in the back, so we are going to grab our pizza. You folks grab your own from home, DiGiorno or whatever you got, and then we'll come back and sit down, and then we'll have our experts in front of the room. It's going to be well worth it. Ask the experts, okay? So you guys go ahead and heat up your pizza, our live streamers. And everybody here, we can line up and go ahead and grab pizza, all right? Greg says hi on Facebook. Who says hi? Greg. Greg. Hey, Greg Johnson in the house. Good guess on the last name there. There's like thousands of Gregs. Oh, yeah, world. our thousands of Gregs. Hello, Greg Johnson. Yeah, but there's only one Greg Johnson. There's only one Greg Johnson. Oh. We know who you are. Hi, Greg. <laughs> Are you having fun? Hi. Learning lots? Oh, I bet. <laughs> you guys want to see this pizza live stream? <laughs> this is what you're missing by not being here. Look at all that pizza. Is there pizza with lots of veggies? I don't know. I love veggies. I see pineapple, ham, pepperoni. Something. It looks all good here. Yeah. So letting people know in advance, our live streamers, that, you know, if you have a tech question. Or any question. Or any question, post it in the panel, the comment section. You can go ahead and even write it down now if you want, while our people are off over on this side getting their food. Um, but tech questions, because 
let's, let's accept the fact that this is a technology-driven space, right? It's all the electrons hooking up to do the work that we want it to do. So you're free to post any kind of technical questions. We will do our best. Sharon in the house with the Mayor Lowe. Yay, Sharon! What a rock star. Give it up for Sharon. She knows how to find the good wine. <laughs> That's what I love about Sharon. <laughs> and a few more things. <laughs> I, I've seen you in Walmart with your wine, by the way. Inside joke, inside joke. It, it really is. Lisa, you know what I'm talking about. If Lisa's in the house. Did you guys at live stream enjoy the fitness aspects of our training today? Say yes, you did, you did, you did. You know you need it. Lifting the dead weights that were nothing. Hey, there we got David. He was doing the dead weights today. Deadlifts, I mean. And the arm circles. That's right. I'm, I'm assuming it's Lisa that said hi, Jade. Lisa, if it's you that's chatting, can you give me three pizzas? And if it's Dave, give me one. I'm just trying to figure out who we're actually chatting with. Can they hear you? What, yeah, they that? can hear me. Oh. Hey. Justin's got a secret convo going on over there. Well, I figured, I figured I had to verbalize the live stream's questions to you guys up there. Yes, so I, I, I agree. Stole, I stole this mic, so you could have that one. That sounds perfectly fine to me. Nancy says, hello, Dallas. I'm thinking Sharon's going to grab me a Merlot. I'll get you one of my little ticket things. I just know she wants to get me a Merlot. She's my girl. Or do you want, are you okay with that? It's right on my, okay. That's one pizza. That's are eight. you kidding? You didn't know I needed one? Oh boy. I got news for you. Yes. Am I doing what? No, there's no caffeine. This is called Blossom or some such thing. Whoops. I keep tripping on that. I'm going to set aside one piece. Hang on, live streamers. Oh, Anne, you could have just told me what you wanted. Oh, a piece. <laughs> I didn't know you meant one piece of pizza. I was like, what does she mean? She's setting aside one piece. I had no idea. Maybe a segment of tonight's thing? I had no idea what was going on. A little peace and quiet? Yeah. See, Greg, the trick to stretching while driving is to just, you know, put the seat all the way back and then stretch. I learned this in the 13-hour drive or 14-hour drive down here. More pizza. Yummy, yummy. Is Zach in the room? I saw Zach a minute ago. There I am. There you are, yay. Okay. Brian, did you introduce Zach? You probably didn't. I did. Oh, you did, okay. You ever, everybody meet Zach Hesterberg? Yeah. Oh yes, there was a convo about him being from St. Louis. I found out that it's it, vitally important to know which high school they went to <laughs> if, no, forget college. It's all about the high school. What grade school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to fall off these chairs. So, what is sweetie pie? Yeah. 
That is a mommy, yeah. So what we wanted to do is, we know that when people are twofold, either you're brand new as an entrepreneur, and, and I've heard, Robert, we had a nice chat the other day, we had a wonderful video together, is that um, when you're an employee and you're used to showing up at work and you're told what to do and you go do it, right? And this space is just a little bit different, right? It's not quite that way. You're the boss, and you look yourself in the mirror, and you go, oh, there's, there's my boss talking back at me. How's, how are you doing there, CEO? And so it's a big transition for a lot of people, and a lot of people weren't raised up in an entrepreneurial environment to have had the role modeling for themselves, right? To even, like, what does that world look like? Um, and then, too, there's people who have been in business. Craig has been very, very successful in business and transitioning into a different business, Carol and Scott, with their businesses. How many people have had a, a business prior to this? Who? oh, wow, oh my goodness. Okay, live streamers, I don't know if you could see that, but that's looked like 80 to 90% of the room of people who have had a business previous. Martha, you've had two. Bar and Grill and the retail women's store for 15 years or so. Okay, 20 years. Wow, seasoned veteran for sure. Yes. So do you think the demographics of this group at EFM is different than like a shop your way to wealth? Absolutely, yeah. definitely. Uh-huh. Far more business owners, uh, experienced yeah. people, yeah, serious very much so. Yeah, we did trifecta here two months ago, which is the local retail arbitrage method. And we asked the same question. It wasn't anywhere near that many hands up. So let's see um, in the live panel, live stream panel, right in the comment section, if you are have had previous business experience. So Greg Johnson, for example, I know has. So write in yes or write in no. And a maybe, no, can't be a maybe, right? Thank you, my dear. Okay, I'm going to set this. It may not be. Yes. Oh, wow. Wine before pizza. Yes. That would be a good There's nobody in my AA class that wants to. All right, so people have, um, by and large, almost everyone here has entrepreneurial background, so it's not as as big a struggle, or it's still a struggle. Yep, Sharon. Okay, so now you're shifting into the e-commerce space. It's different, isn't it? I mean, for me, I made the shift out of my target audience was network marketers. A lot of you raised your hand. You were familiar with the Renegade Network Marketer, for example, and the shift into e-commerce was, and by the way, I shifted via an MLM, which made it really a smooth transition, so to speak, but I had to shift my training company, and that took about a year and a half bend in the road with a lot of messaging in between while I made that shift. And e-commerce is different. So um, we wanted to have this so that you guys have the opportunity to ask specific questions for e-commerce and business in general, anything that can help you do better in your business. So all questions are on the table. Yes, yeah. Well, I've been talking to several people. Do I need to bring the mic up, Justin? No. No, okay. And um, we all feel like we have gotten a great bang for our buck. But it's almost sometimes too much and it's overwhelming because you don't know how much time to spend on the back office, how much time mm -hmm. to go out and do it. And, and so I was just wondering if you all would sh share how much time you spend or what you would recommend spending um, to try to juggle the whole, um, you know. I think we're going to get a variety of answers right. on that. But I'm good. eager there's to jump variety. at it, but I but totally hear you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the question is, when coming in, it can feel very overwhelming. And how do you balance between... X amount of time training versus X amount of implementation. What is the blend there? So I think we're going to hear a few different answers, and Sandy would love to answer that. Um, well, 
the way that I, because I, kn I know what it's like to join in on a group or join a course or a mastermind and have all this amazing information that's in front of you. And you're kind of like, okay, I'll do this. And then, oh, that looks really cool. And then, oh, I really like that. I want to do that too. And what happens is you're helter skelter all over the place. What I have done most of the time is <laughs> is to try to dis take one little bite out of the app out of the elephant at a time. Um, when I was in grad school, I did an internship for a company in Belgium that did time management training, and I really it, it was probably the, I learned a lot about marketing and that when I worked for them. But I but the time management little piece of it was a matter of okay, I am going to spend X amount of time this day working on whatever it is that you want to work on and put it in a priority. Now, Brian and Josie and Anne will give you a better priority on setting up your Shopify store and all of that kind of thing. But as far as like social media, pick one thing. Get really good, study that. Don't, I mean, we talked about all different kinds of social media, all different kinds of posts. Throw that all away. Pick one thing that you like and focus on it. And just say, okay, today I'm going to spend half an hour on this. I'm going to spend an hour on this. I'm going to spend, you know, while I'm on the treadmill, I'm going to do this. Or while I'm walking Vivi or whatever, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to listen to this podcast and learn this. So just don't look at it as a big, big, huge, like, abundance of things that you have to learn. Look at it as one little thing at a time and learn that really well and then move on to the next little thing. And then it's not as overwhelming. So a lot of our training is broken down into modules. So for instance, the way Brian and I designed the POD course, there's a module. And so we'd suggest that, and I'm assuming you can say something different if this you want. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I'm queen for a day. <laughs> Are you king? <laughs> I'm your humble servant. <laughs> no, you're the king. <laughs> OK. So uh, I would suggest that you do a module and then take the actions that are suggested in that module uh, because it's the, in the doing that you're going to learn it. And um, until you complete those tasks, and you may need to go back and um, watch the video again or go through the list and that kind of thing, until you accomplish that task and feel like you really mastered it, um, don't go on to the next module because it does become overwhelming that way. So one step at a time. There's not a rush here. I know you're enthusiastic. You want to get through it all in a day. <laughs> but it, you really learn when you do. And so I, and I also want to say from my own experience is that <clears throat> I cannot sit for longer than about 90 minutes. At 90 minutes, my attention wanders. And even though if I try and push through that 90 minutes, I don't get better at it. So. I've learned to respect my body. I get up, I move around for at least 10 minutes. Uh, I have a treadmill, not a treadmill, but a, a bike uh, right next to my office. So I'll go and I get on a bike for that 10 minutes. Um, and then I'll come back and begin to focus again on whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish. But that would be my suggestion. I heard a different question. So what I heard is that there's so much available to you that you don't really know what you should be focusing on mm -hmm. and what is the right path. Is that correct? That, that's part of it, yes, because there's, every time you get on, you've added another dimension. <laughs> and, she, and Sandy's right. It's like, oh, this looks even better. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. OK, so um, Katie said that every time she you know, comes back to the business school, there's another program there. There's more. We keep moving the target. And the problem is, is knowing what the target is, knowing what the goal is. So it's really clear. If you say, I want to sell used books on Amazon, I know that's what I want to do, we've got the course for you. And you can step right through it. It's very clear. And it'll lead you to success in doing that. But if you don't know what your goal is, then you've got a problem. And I think that's where the angst comes around this in the room. And your challenge as a student is my challenge as a trainer, is to provide you with that path that will get you to this place where you feel like, yeah, this is what I wanted. 
but it's, it's really difficult if I don't know what you want. So e-commerce is a moving target. It's changing all the time. We built the print-on-demand profit system, and you know I, I know that it leads to a viable goal, and yet I'm seeing where people are struggling. It's like, okay, let's bring in an Amazon component to this, and that'll change again. And right now, with the new companies that are coming in, it's changing even more. Um, print-on-demand is not... Look, e-commerce is not static. So you have to get on the bus somewhere on the trip. And as you're you know, moving along, you've got to decide where it is that you want to end up. And if you don't know where you want to end up, then you're just here for the ride. So what I appreciate is that you trust us enough to say, I'm going to get on your bus, on the e-commerce business school bus and ride with you, and I'm not sure what the destination is, but I trust you guys to care for me while I'm on the bus. Well, I think you're good. <laughs> okay? Speaking of a bus, huh, Zach? We were talking about buses. We have a tool, and I have to admit, at this point in time, it's only available in the e-commerce master's program, and it's called the, what's the full name, Sharon? The um, e-commerce roadmap to a $10,000. Six-figure income. It is a roadmap. It's a 33-page manual. We know and we recognize that you all come from varied backgrounds. You all have very different situations. You all have different dreams and destinations. Like Brian said, where are you going to? So for example, we have had people who say, I want to be like Brian. I want to be in an RV just like Brian. OK, that's a destination. So when you fill out the roadmap, and it is very thorough, now we know what you want, and you had to take the time to put input and think about it. Because otherwise, you are in what's called reactive mode. You, you see a new thing, and it's basically, you can call it a shiny object. Wow, now she's got this and this going. But we, we don't know if that's really the best fit for you, so our roadmap is a tool and a solution to help mitigate that very problem. We have another tool. A lot of, how many of you are in e-commerce master's program? Please raise your hand. Okay, it's a very underutilized tool. Sharon, do you know what that tool is by any chance? Yeah. Christy, do you know what that tool is by any chance, my dear? I have a mouthful. It's so rude. Yeah, right in the mouthful. Um, let's see. Rich, do you know what it is? Yeah. So I think of Christina. I know what Christina's roadmap is. I know exactly what Christina's roadmap is. And she'll say, I went back and I reviewed my roadmap. The roadmap is meant to be your compass, your north star. And, and I have to say, Kurt and Brian together put in 200 hours. I don't know. It was through a lot of work with talking, working with our members. Then it was the composition of it. The whole team spent time on it, right, Sharon? The whole team poured through that document. That is meant to be your North Star. And we go by what you have inputted, and you have to think about it. If you go to a bank to get a loan, they want to see your business plan. So the roadmap helps you put together a marginal roadmap, a, a plan. So I know with Christina, I know exactly what she's wanting to do. And I see her report every week, and I can track with Christina. I know where she's at. I know Sharon really, really, really well because of her weekly report. So those, that serves as your North Star compass. And it's a highly underutilized tool, as is the accountability report. And then you need not be as lost. If that make, does it make sense at all? So it's in the back office of those who are in e-commerce master's program. You know, I look back to my college days. I flitted from one major to the next because I love to learn. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love, oh my gosh, I love that. And I love that. Oh my gosh, I love so many things. Right, Josie? We talked about that. I love to learn. And I did not have someone who buckled me down and said, yeah, well, you're going to have to declare your major. I got in at U of M. So I was lost in the tens of thousands of students. So that's why we're here for you in that capacity is with the roadmap and the weekly accountability review so that you are not lost and floundering. Does this make sense? I mean, does, is it helpful to you, Sharon and Christy, every week you submit? You wouldn't believe how brilliant those reports are. 
absolutely brilliant if you watch their progress and their development of how they manage their time. And they just get better and better and better and better. So those people who are utilizing those tools, do they are dialing it in. I went on kind of long, sorry. Did you want to add anything? No, to that? I think you guys oh, no. pretty much okay. covered it. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone over here had a question for you. I uh, okay. Oh, yeah. um, if you had one social media platform to choose that you could only use one, what would you choose? It would depend on your avatar or target market. Oh, me? What would I choose? I'd probably choose Pinterest. I'd probably choose Pinterest. I mean, I love Facebook. I love YouTube. But I think right now, I mean, Pinterest announced in February, I think, they're going public. So right now, Pinterest really, really cares about showing income, which means there's lots of opportunities, and they're changing a lot of things. So I, I'm really um, spending a lot of time. I, I, I've spent a lot of time studying Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook. Instagram, kinda. I just, I don't find the numbers on Instagram um, for whatever reason. But I, I really, really feel like, that's why we're devoting tomorrow to Pinterest. I'm gonna put a lot of time in the mastermind into buyable pins, promoted pins, um, shoppable, well, shoppable pins, really. It's kind of, cha everything's changing. So that's, it, but again, it really depends on your demographic. I, I would, I would do something where you have a planner and you can do Facebook at the same time as you're doing. Again, if you have a blog as your base where you have everything housed and you've get it like a Hootsuite or Buffer or one of those, then you can be doing, and also if you post something on Pinterest, you can automatically have, connect it to your Twitter and your Facebook account and just, all you just click a little button and it goes to both of those two. So that takes no time. But I, I would pick one. I mean, if you don't like doing lives and all you're going to do is just post stuff, then pin. But the thing about Pinterest is you ha they, want, um, they want new content. They want content creators. They don't want to see, oh, I shared this, I shared this, I shared this. Now, mind you, on my personal Pinterest account, that's pretty much all I do. But on Bodabra, we create new content all the time. And that's kind of where I would go. Is that? OK. And then. One more thing, I, I've taught a lot um, of people starting businesses and how to get your business started. And one of the things that is most important is remember your foundation. You have to start, you can't be reaching out to other parts without building your foundation, your knowledge, knowing what you're doing. But I used to teach, I taught um, how to, I had an infomercial that taught people how to get into the gift basket business. And this is before the internet. so. Um, it was like an old-fashioned TV infomercial. <laughs> um, but I told people, I said, take a binder and put your business plan and your marketing plan in a binder. And then you can rip a page out and replace it with another page. Because just because you set your roadmap in one way doesn't mean that's the way you have to go. If you're on the road and there's traffic, you'll detour. So I just remember that you, it's not set in stone. That is so true. Check and adjust. I mean, I didn't see myself shifting into e-com. There are specific reasons why I shifted into e-com. The results were so much faster for our students. That was the main reason. I didn't have that in my business plan. I shifted because the economics showed itself to be, yeah, take people to e-com. People get a lot of success there. Any questions rolling in, Justin? Nope. Oh, all righty. There. Oh, Christy, or I'm sorry, Christy? Oh, I was just going to make a further comment to Martha's. Um, <coughs> um, I'm not, a, as you know, Instagram is just, I don't get it. But <coughs> just because I, just, I don't get it doesn't mean that I, it doesn't send a lot of traffic to my site. So um, <coughs> but what I found that I do understand is that I've linked Facebook with Instagram such that if I put um, original posts on Facebook and I say, yes, I want it on my Instagram page, it'll do that too. So that's one thing I do understand. And I can just go, boom, I, I hit two platforms at once. And that's nice. And the kids can do the rest. 
Can I? <laughs> is, is there anybody on here that's doing messenger in, um, advertising? Are you going to teach that? Uh, not specifically places. Okay. No. No, because that's a no, that's a place right now where it, Facebook is really pushing is on. You can get a bot. I mean, we have a bot. Um, it's really funny because you know people will write and then it'll say I'm just a bot, but Facebook thinks we have a hundred percent response like right away, so <laughs> which is really cool. But um, you know, w and we can talk about. I don't think we're going to have time this weekend. But getting into um, messenger advertising is a really it's a really open field right now. A lot of companies are using it, um, and as long as you're not being spammy with your bot and you're actually paying Facebook for the ads like you would pay for any other ad, it's absolutely legal. And people will, op not as many people use Messenger like that, so when they get a message on Messenger, even if it's an ad, they're more apt to open it and read it. Cindy. Kathy, I liked your question. I'm going to see if I understood it a little more. I think I said this to you the other day, Ann, and, and, and I wasn't clear in that either. But when we're asking about your schedule, i got to say I was so surprised when Brian and Josie were talking about when you start building your team, and you said it was like $200,000 to $300,000, was that? Or less. Or less. Sorry, okay. 100,000. 100, okay. Which still blew me away. It seemed like there's so much for us to do. So I was thinking, I, I too would love to see what your daily schedule is like. How much time do you give to bookkeeping, creative, <coughs> studying, sharpening the apps, that kind of thing? Do you have a schedule for those? Because we're doing, we're doing it all. <laughs> okay. We're going to just take out the work for Anne. <laughs> Set that aside. Oh, okay. <laughs> Especially Brian. <laughs> so the amount of time that I spend directly on my on the business business is probably twenty minutes a day because my team does everything. My team for all my businesses does everything. Could you speak to us as beginners then? Okay. <laughs> but so the time I, so the a lot a lot of the time that I do get to spend uh, is learning new things, and and that's really important to me. And so that's where I'm spending the majority of my time. What about when you first started? You know, like we all are. Okay. So when I when I first started, um, when I first started, everything was brand new, and and it was it really was doing it to to learn it and. The first, <laughs> and, the, and the first piece that I needed help with was uh, because I began by selling on Amazon uh, using a wholesale model, meaning that I went out and I found products. I uh, went to trade shows. Uh, I ordered products. I sent them into Amazon. And the first piece that I needed was help with packing things up. And so... That was the part that I got help with first. And then when I reached, when I got farther into it, then I needed help. You know, uh, I hired a bookkeeper right away because I'm not good with that. I'm real good at looking at the bottom line, but I'm not really good at doing the number pieces that give me the bottom line. So I hired the bookkeeper next. And then I hired a VA. Um, not too long after, um, I think I, I think it must have been towards the um, eighth or ninth month that I was doing it is when I hired my first VA. So when you did that, how signed profit were you? Like, was all of this covered by your profit from your business, or was it um, <coughs> was some of it an investment in your business, hiring the extra people? The Okay, so the question was, um, how was I able to uh, hire people because I had profit, or was I putting out money to invest in my business? And when I first started doing, uh, getting help with the packaging, it was a risk for me. 
because um, I went out and I rented warehouse space and then hired somebody to come in and help. And what I learned from that very quickly was that that was going to be tough for me to pay the bills. Um, and so I decided to do it to help other people as well, other sellers, and that paid my bills. <laughs> so, uh, and then I was able to hire a VA and so on and so forth from what I was making, so I never was in the red with that. But what I, what I know now, looking back on it, is that I would have hired much sooner because then I would have, they would have been doing those repetitive tasks that didn't require the decision making that as an owner you make. And that would have moved me along much faster. So that was a lesson learned at that point. If you've read the four hour work week, uh, Tim is a Ferris. He says, hire before you need them. Yeah, I can't agree with it more either, based on my experience. So my path is different than Josie's, but yet the elements there are about the same. Um, book flipping, that's all I was doing, and it was four months along, I think. Four to five months, and I hired um, uh, my, I hired Candy, who does all the, the handling of the books. So at that time, it was Merchant Fulfilled. A few months later, I was doing FBA. But hiring Candy allowed me to spend that time that I had been fulfilling orders out sh uh, sourcing books. It was the smartest move I made was to hire her. And at the time, it felt like a risk. It was the same thing. Can I really afford this? Um, and then a VA, I don't know. I hired, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hired somebody to do sponsored ads for me. That was the first thing that I did. And I, I've hired a number of people. Nick has been uh, tremendous. So now, who do you hire? That would be the next thing. Obviously, we both hired somebody to handle physical products for us, to handle the physical part of it. But there's lots of other elements in your business. A bookkeeper should come right away if you don't do the books yourself. That, that piece should come right away. And that's, I mean, you would do that for your life, right? You have a, an accountant if you don't do your own taxes. So you get that expertise. Um, business management or an advisor or a mentor, well, you're here. So you're getting that piece. Then the rest of it is, how do I want to build my business and which components can I um, offset first? We don't have to do a lot of customer service with Amazon, but that's one of the first things that most businesses offset is customer service. Handling physical products is another one, especially with Amazon businesses. And then uh, product research and sourcing is usually the next one that gets handled, So, especially for Amazon. So I think your VA probably did product research. Yeah, my There are a number of tasks now that I feel like, you know, if you ask me how to do it, I would have to really think about it because it's been so long since I've done it because my VAs do it automatically. Um, and so what I'm real good at is learning new stuff and saying, now we're going to do this. The people that you're right. I do some of the stuff that we're going to talk about tomorrow and play with tomorrow. <laughs> I'm counting on you being in that seat. <laughs> 20 minute drive. It's about being a good delegator. Uh, I can't say that I'm the best at it, but I know back when I was building my MLM and scaling, the first person I hired was my youngest son who was in seventh grade. And I thought, why am I spending two hours a day of processing my leads? There's a whole distinct process of printing out a sheet and putting in a CD and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, this is, I hate to call it, but no-brainer work. Why am I doing this? I want to run the company and the business. So I hired him at, shh, five bucks an hour. I mean, he was in, he was in seventh grade. But it was offsetting a no-brainer, right? Something that is repeatable. I know. Hey there, David. I love you, David. But David is becoming a superstar. No. <laughs> oh, boy, now I'm in trouble. No, he was my son. 
Here's my son. So it's okay, right, Martha? <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't abuse our family. They, you know, they became very competent as a result. All right. Was there another question? Or? Thank you. <laughs> the wine. I had a question for Josie. She said she spends about 20 minutes a day right now researching and learning new things. But you take that and you delegate that, don't you? No, I didn't. I, I say I spend about 20 minutes a day on the business. Okay. Then. Uh, but oh, and then yeah. learning new things is is in addition, in addition to that. But you're Miss Systems, so you probably take that and systematize it. Yes. And give it to your yes your staff to do. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Yeah. So that's in addition to the 20 minutes of reviewing your business. Yeah. Day. So you know I could stop at this. You know, I really see that learning as an investment in in how the business is going to continue to grow and and become more efficient and so on. Uh, but that's not running the business okay. now. That's a good question. Uh, Greg on the live stream wants to know, Josie, are you still in wholesale? Yes, yes. That was easy. Uh, and <laughs> Tim uh, asks, I worry about giving VAs usernames and passwords to Amazon, Shopify, et cetera. Thoughts? You know, I think whenever, my feeling is that whenever you hire somebody, you go slowly and you see whether or not they're trustworthy and then you give them a piece here and a piece there. Um, and I use LastPass mm -hmm. so that I can, um, all my passwords, uh, usernames are in there and I then give, uh, send them an invitation. So I can turn that off at any time so they don't have the password or the username and so on. Um, also, when you're finding VAs, oftentimes, I, I don't know how you guys all find your VAs, but I've used them, whether that be off Upwork or Fiverr, but they all have reviews. And so make sure that they're one of like the top rated uh, people in their industry on those platforms because they're not gonna get to good reviews by screwing people over. Um, so monitor reviews, but then also, uh, especially with your Shopify stores, when you're giving someone access, you can actually control what level of access they have. Just don't give them an admin access. It's the exact same thing with, um, like for instance, if you're going to have someone run Facebook ads for you, you, they don't have to be an admin straight from the get-go. Work your way up. Um, and actually, one more thing on reviews. You'll go, and I mean, I do this for anything that I'm, anybody I'm hiring, anything I'm buying. The first thing I do is look at the negative reviews because the negative reviews are going to tell you a lot. And then I'll look at the most recent because if every recent review is really good, but the first maybe two or three were negative, then I'm not worried about it. But I look at job completion and then I look at their negative reviews, and then I worry about their positive reviews because the negatives tell you a lot. Yeah, perfect. Oops. Did you want to say anything? Uh, you guys have said it well. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the I feel very comfortable with the VAs that I have, um, but I do keep in um, my system is built so that they're safeguards. You know, um, the people, um, three of the people, four of the people that I have uh, work overseas, are overseas. There are three people in uh, the Philippines and one in India. And the situation is different there. And, you know, I'm paying salaries that are four or $500 to some and a lot more to others because of the different work that they do. But I set the system up so that that they can't get themselves in trouble. So you know, if I had to choose between uh, my child's health and my employer's fiscal well-being, I would pick my child. I'm not so I'm setting up systems where they can't be put in a position where they would be able to make that choice. But I've had VA come to me and say, I have a sick child. They're in the hospital. Can you help me? Uh, By all means, I'll do whatever I can to help you. 
but the system is set up so that we're not in a position where there's any temptation. I'm gonna make a comment. I think it's absolutely stunning and amazing that Josie puts in 20 minutes a day. <laughs> Because that is so not my case. <laughs> and, I, and I marvel at it and I go, is it because we're in such a different industry? And I do think that's part of it. And then it could be that the delegation, I'm not sure, but I'm I truly believe a lot of it is to do with e-commerce. I could be wrong. Please chasten me. These two would love to chasten me. Josie, she did this wonderful book study with me and my staff to say, we're gonna get you in the same boat, Anne. I can hardly imagine, what is Brian doing? Is he laughing hysterically? <laughs> oh, he's rolling in his eyes, is he? Yeah, 20 minutes a day? Are you kidding? Anyways, that, that would be just like, I, does that sound appealing to you? Yeah. I mean, you guys should be literally jumping out of your chairs with joy, because to me, that, that is like unbelievable. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, there's some truth to that. As far, as far as relative to what you want to do, et cetera, and have the time freedom, I'll, I'll just kind of stop right there because Brian is going to probably keep showing weird expressions. So, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so any other questions? Yes? The variety of... Um, expertise and also I love the I don't know any other way to put it but the variety of ages and it's so <laughs> wonderful that you've given us that example you've tapped into yeah I'm the youngest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> I love that you know I, I that's a very interesting comment um, I remember my sister-in-law saying, Ann, you need to get more millennials in your business. And Justin, at the beginning, we had four or five millennials. Yeah, we had number two. Yes, I mean, really. And, and then first season, it was more weighted over in the baby boomers. And we have had, let's see, do we have four or five millennials now? And you really need to get balanced. It really is true because there is a very different perspective and I needed that and I embrace it fully, wholeheartedly. Um, I, I'm glad you made that comment because we do have a fair amount of millennials and you know they keep pace with things one heck of a lot faster because they grew up with it. They were attached from their belly button. From the belly button, Zach. <laughs> Practically. <laughs> so, I, anyway, so it's, uh, it's an interesting observation because I don't know that you guys see the front facing of how many millennials, but I think we have four or five on the team right now, right? And it, is, it creates a balance that is very, very needful. And as you can see from our demographics, we are mostly, we are mostly baby boomers, but over time we will get a, more and more of the younger set as well, but it is so integral. Yes, Brenda. Each, how many uh, staff members you have and how That's long you've actually question. been in the business? Do you want to answer what I was just saying? Well, I'm going to add something and then, yeah. yeah. What I was going to say also is one of the things about um, doing your your videos and editing them and filming them and all of that kind of thing, I have always gone to high, I, I, I still do, I just got somebody new recently. I'll go to the high schools and ask the pho photography and the, or the broadcasting if there's a student that wants an internship. I'll pay them, but it ends up being really, a really, really good way. Now, each one, like right now, we have a learning curve, and you know, for him to learn to work with me, me to work with him, but it's incredible because you can mentor a young child, they're getting paid, and you know, I, I said to um, Jacob, who's working with me right now, I'm like, I feel bad because I'm not paying you that much. I'm paying him $9 an hour. And he said, oh my God, my friends are working at Walmart and they're so jealous because <laughs> I get to do something I like doing. 
So it's, you know, it takes me more time because I'm, I'm teaching him how to put a video together, what people want to watch. You know, one of the things we talked about was, you know, we have a materials list. And he said, well, I didn't put them, and, and he had asked me to read the material list to be behind it. And I go, no, people don't want to listen to me read it. It's, it takes too long. So he took the materials list out. And I said, no, we have to have it. But then as I was watching the replay, I said, oh, we can put it under each time that I do a step. I can put, this is, you know, um, a yard of one and a half inch ribbon or something like that. So I learn and he learns. And it takes maybe a little bit longer than hiring a professional, but it feels really, really good. And you, you'll have somebody that will work with you and then you'll end up with someone else that will work with you. So if you feel overwhelmed by some of those tasks, don't be. And if you have another really, really good vehicle, I find, for finding um, people to help me out is nextdoor.com. And I'll go on there and I'll say, I, in fact, that's how I found Jacob. And his mother responded and said, oh, my son would be perfect for that. So you, people will, it's, it's really awesome. And next door is free and it's your neighbors. So you kind of know the people. They kind of know you. And it's, it's like really great. So that was my thought. As far as employees, I have, um, I don't have any I'm my one employee, and I actually have payroll for me because I don't want to deal with the IRS if I mess something up. So I actually have a payroll service that pays me. <laughs> um, and then I have, um, I have my team of designers who are all over the country, and they just will, some of them work for product, some of them work for money, and um, they'll invoice me on PayPal, and then I just pay them, I pay them immediately as soon as I get the invoice, because that, I mean, people aren't used to being paid right away. And I'm like, okay, it came through. I'm paying them, period. I, I don't have to think about it. It's, it's there. And then they know they can rely on me to pay them right away. And that, that makes a big difference, I think. Um, and then I have a team in India who do my website. They built my app. We have a free Bodaver app on iTunes and, <laughs> um, and Google Play, so you guys can download it. Um, but <laughs> And I had this company in India develop my app for me. They do the app man maintenance. I pay them monthly or I pay them for extra things that they do. They'll, um, they edit my blog posts um, for my... Um, for my lives to turn them into a YouTube post. They do that. Um, they're amazing. I mean, I totally highly recommend them. I've worked with them for about seven or eight years. I'm happy to refer anybody that needs that kind of work done. They also do Amazon listings. I mean, they do a lot of different things. Um, and then I have, I'll just go on up, like I have to do these crazy PowerPoint things for these presentations. So, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of behind. So I went on Upwork and hired somebody in Bangladesh to help me finish up my slides. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it, you never know what you're going to need, but that's the really cool thing about Fiverr or Upwork or whatever, or even Nextdoor, help, I need something. One day, I had nobody to help me with my lives. I went on Nextdoor and, and basically did that. I said, help, I need somebody to fill my live. And somebody came and helped me. <laughs> so you just, you, you just never know. And so think kind of outside the box when you're looking. So I just want to be clear. I don't really have a e-commerce business store that uh, a lot of you guys are trying to build. I run ads for those types of businesses. Um, so my business structure is just different as a whole. Um, I have a couple graphic designers that I pay on a per project basis if I need them. Uh, I have a couple ad managers that I pay on a per project basis if I need them. Uh, for the most part, I'm the only one consistently getting paid in my business though. Um, in reference to uh, you would, or the in regards to the intern uh, program you had mentioned, <clears throat> I being younger have a following of people that are either still in college or just recently graduated. Uh, I've gone the intern route probably. I think I've had about five interns over the past couple of years. Uh, my last two, I, I realized that I'm completely done with interns, um, not because they're bad; they're amazing, but they. If you actually put your time into investing into an intern, you can help them out so much, which is amazing. But here's the thing. It takes a lot of your time. 
And so my thing is like my past two interns I had working with me uh, in a co-working space like a couple days a week. I was investing, I don't know, probably 15, 20 hours a week uh, training them, making sure they were really good. Yeah, I know. And they got really freaking good at managing Facebook ads and creating good, uh, profitable Facebook ads. Uh, I could only keep them for about three months before they got an incredible job opportunity for each of them. Um, I mean, straight out of college making fifty, sixty thousand dollars uh, without an MBA or anything, just a bachelor's degree. They're putting everyone else to shame because real world knowledge I was helping invest uh, into them. But I can't keep doing that. <laughs> so uh, I still use those guys every now and then because they're still really good. I still do have a couple graphic designers. Uh, one, a personal friend that charges me uh, quite a bit more than someone off Fiverr. But I know I can rely on him for the creative freedom. But if I know specifically what exactly I need done, I'm just going to use someone off Fiverr for 5 to 10 bucks. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my answer. Oh, and then also I have uh, one copywriter I work with on a re uh, very regular basis. I'll just add one thing. The reason I hire my interns is not because I'm having to train them how to edit video. It's because I have no clue, and they do. <laughs> so who was it that asked about the hours? Or Okay. Um, yeah, so I was thinking further about, like, Josie has an e-commerce business. I well, I'm kind of like, I think about Justin there. He went to U of M, right? We both went to U of M. There's a dean of the U of M. And I don't know if the dean of the U of M works 20 minutes a day. I, I mean, honestly, just to compare, and I, do you think he works 20 minutes a day? In that business model, so to speak. Current dean? Yeah. Oh, maybe he does. I don't know who the current dean is, but. <laughs> we assume he doesn't. <laughs> he, does lot, he does a lot of networking. I don't know. Oh, well, this is what the real, yeah, that's a very good point. Anyways, back to that. I just kind of the comparison of business model of running an educational institution is, I think isn't quite the same. But I, I should meet with the dean of a university <laughs> to find out. I really should. Anyways, um, so I don't have the number in my head. I think we have about, um, we only have so many employees and almost everybody is an independent contractor as far as that. Um, of the immediate staff, I think we're at about nine or 10. And with coaches and trainers, I think we're at about 15. Um, my business model is such as just like I ran my sports gym as my students became my coaches because they inherently had my coaching philosophy because um, talent is talent and skill is skill but I really wanted the philosophical aspect of education is extremely important to me because I saw really bad coaching philosophy that I felt was damaging that I just it's just like that no we don't we don't treat people that way when I was doing coaching and I would see the differences amongst the gyms of which in gymnastics there's some really horrific stuff that happens I thought no we will never be that that's just not how I roll but so anyways so an extension of that is we are designed such that there is a career path for people I'm putting in a plug do you notice um, for people to become coaches and trainers because we are fond of expansion I was just sharing with Zach a few minutes ago across the street he said where do you want to take this so I, I was telling him pretty big right um, and so that would necessitate coaches and trainers and granted not you know only so many people are really suited towards that but that's why I love that model so much is we groom up people from within and they have an affinity for our educational philosophy which is having the individual the core you know the respect of the individual as a learner and not you know treating people en mass and and driving them through a system which I'm really adverse to. I really like the customized solution for people, a customized path for people. But anyways, I, I digress somewhat there, but um, about 15 people. So on over to you, Josie. <laughs> so um, in the Amazon business, I have uh, the uh, four VAs, and one of them is a designer. And then in the shipping business, I have a customer service person my son, uh, who kind of oversees both customer service and what goes on in the warehouse, I have a shipping manager. There's a full-time employee there, and then we have a number of, of um, part-time people that come in when we need them. Three business models. Right? Those are three business agencies. Yeah. <laughs> that is so amazing. Does it sound overwhelming sometimes, like this morning when I was talking about all the aspects into a business? Well, when I hear Josie, I feel that way. 
Um, I have. Oh, it's just a process. I know it's just a process, but I think if, if, if I were to dump all that on my plate right now, I'd be like, oh, I'd be so overwhelmed. Anyway, just the same way that you might feel when I talked about all the processes. So I have two full-time VAs, um, a part-time shipping person, and a I'm negotiating with a, another VA that's we're deciding between 25 or 40 hours a week. We finally branched into the VA world, which, you know, e-commerce is known very much for them getting VAs. And so we have a gal we love. She may even be watching. Hello, Jade from the Philippines. And it's so cool because Lisa just absolutely loves her and loves her work. And it's like, yay, it worked for us to have a VA. And um, she's very, very talented. And so it's kind of fun that we bridged into that world. And she's done a marvelous job. And it's always kind of fun to know, oh, yeah, she comes on right around 7 or 9 o'clock, you know, and knowing when she comes online and I see her answering. And and uh, so it's uh, to impress Lisa is a lot. So it, if Lisa loves her, then I love her too. So hello, Jade, if you're there. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes, Sharon. It's not a question, it's just experience that uh, kind of a caution that I went through when I was going, don't go too fast. Because if you go and hire too fast and you don't have, and you don't have the resources, you can get yourself into trouble. But you know, I, I know the value of, of getting help in the VA. Do you want to answer to that and maybe repeat it back for those guys? So Sharon said, um, don't go too fast in, in hiring somebody and, because you can get in over your head. However, I would change that a little bit and say that if you know what the job is and you know that you could be doing a different job, a different process in your business that's going to be uh, produce more income than that job, and you could spend your time there rather than here, by all means hire somebody. But the difference there is you know exactly what you want that person to do. And that way you maintain control. You know how many hours it is, you know how much it's going to cost you, and you also know how much you can benefit by doing this other process. And I think the problem that some people run into, and, and Sharon, you might have felt this, that you hire somebody hoping they have the experience to figure something out and handle a particular piece in your business that you don't know how to handle. And if that's the case, it's like rolling the dice. You might get somebody that can do that, but if you're not real clear on what the objective is and how to get there. that we're still learning and you're just beginning and there was those shiny objects that you had to go on like this and you really don't have the picture. Not talking being premature. That we don't have the total picture and um, you know, so yeah, we're going to do the V8 because you, you, I can recognize that I needed help. I recognize that if I did this, then perhaps I could, just like you said, you know, focus on something that's more money making. And I'll tell you, I do you have a word on that, Josie, in terms of when do you feel you have the depth of experience and knowledge to safely pass it off? Am I maybe understanding the general gist? Do you maybe have a view on that? At the point that you have a real clear understanding of the processes and that you can sit down and say, okay, these are the steps that I go through for a particular process. You know, I do A, B, C, D, and this is the result that I expect. You ought to be able to write that out. Uh, you ought to be able to do a video to instruct somebody else or give them that written piece. And because you've already done it, and gone through that analytical process, or I should say the, you know, the, the process of identifying all of the components of it, then you have a real good idea of how long it takes. Uh, and so you know what that job is worth to you. 
And so when you can do that, I think you need to have that in mind before you hire somebody else because otherwise you're just going to be hiring somebody and saying, well, I need help with this and... It's a crapshoot. Yeah. And you won't be able to judge how much time it really should take to do right. that job. Right. And then there's another circumstance. You may not know how to do Facebook ads. I'm assuming most yeah. people in this room don't know how to do Facebook ads. But you know the end result that you want and you're looking for X number of sales, you're looking for sales volume, and you're looking for a return on your ad uh, expense, the amount that you're paying an agency, and the amount that you're putting on ads to produce a particular result. If you understand the result that you want, um, then you can hire an expert that knows how to do that. You don't have to know how to do it, but you do need to know how to manage the result Christine, ooh, lots of hands going up. We'll, we'll take Christina. Um, I'm just wondering um, if you all have sort of an exit strategy for your businesses. I mean, how long do you intend to run your business, or do you, you know, or do you have a plan of eventually selling your business? So I'm just kind of curious what your visions are. Well, I go back and forth about whether or not I want to sell the business. And I always come back to, I'm having fun. <laughs> I was just thinking of how much detail to give you. Um, I want the business to support my lifestyle, doing the things I love to do. And, and I love to do this, what I'm doing right now. So uh, 20 minutes a day. Um, possibly that's how it works out for me too in, in my business. Although I do spend other time, like Josie does, researching things and thinking about things. And uh, I might have a two hour meeting uh, with Nick occasionally rather than the 20 or 30 minutes that we do here and there. But I want it to support that other piece. My business isn't my end goal. Now, if I built it up to this point where you know, I could cash out for a reasonable amount and I was tired of the business and just said, I'm ready to cash out, I would do that. But I don't know what that number is. I don't know what that would look like. See, the other thing is that once you have the running and it's producing income for, for you, why would you sell it? At least that's the way I see it at this point. <laughs> okay. um, I was just talking to Anne about this a little bit the other day. Um, in 2008, I hit the trifecta. Nevada real estate, Arizona real estate, and Bernie Madoff. <laughs> so I look at, like, I look at Bodabra and the time that I invested in building that brand, and I don't, I'm, I don't believe in debt, so like that's why I pay my bills right away, because I don't want to owe. And thank goodness that was the case, because I wasn't worried about that. But in the same note, I look at my business as an annuity. It's going to keep paying me as long as you know I continue to market and do whatever. Um, and there's always new ways to market and new opportunities. Um, I was just, I mean, if you guys are doing um, one of the things to look at in um, print on demand is I just was approached, I talked to the US Postal Service and they have a really cool international program where you just ship your project, your product to Los Angeles or whatever and their system integrates with your system so that they're telling you what you need to charge for the customs for all that but they guarantee that the product's gonna go and they take care of what anybody around the world needs to pay for it. So look, I mean, my, my MBA is an international business, so I always look international, and how can I do it, but how do you cover the risk and the cost? Like, is it gonna arrive? How will, you know, is somebody gonna say, oh, I didn't receive it? Well, I can't track it or prove it. But now with this new system that the post office has, you can pretty much ship anywhere in the world. So that's, and all you have to do is ship, you know, you get their software, you put it in, um, 
the only difference, like I use PayPal, I get paid right away. Um, and with their system, you get paid in 15 days, which is the same as like Amazon doesn't pay you right away. So it's definitely, <laughs> definitely something to look into. So it opens up a whole nother world of where you can go. And I don't, if I retired, I'd probably start another business. So <laughs> I just don't know how to stop. I mean, I'm so old. I'm I'm already ready to retire. Uh, <laughs> um, right, exactly. Uh, I'm sorry. Was the question what is the exit strategy? Or yeah, I I don't have one at the moment. Um, I've really built my business in a way that is self reliant on me, which is not a good business to have. To be completely transparent, um, like if I died, my business is going to die. Um, so that will change and I do have plans to change that, but even when it changes, I'm not looking to sell anytime soon. Like I, I'm young enough. I'm ready to keep going. So it's a game for me. <laughs> oh, Sandy, you with that <laughs> chuckle. Oh man. Um, I thought I had an exit plan. Um, you know, I, I feel I was born to teach. Well, because there's a backstory that we won't go into. There's a hint to you, Brian. Uh, no, it's my parents are both teachers, and I know that I will be teaching for a very long time. I think of the traditional workspace. My parents, my dad, or pardon me, my mother was a teacher, and then retirement was coming up. She had, she just wasn't into it. It was a very hard decision because she really loved what she was doing, but she was in the school system for which there are pensions and yada, yada, yada. I don't have that. Um, but that love for teaching, I know that I will always be teaching. So I don't have an exit plan. I, I did have an exit plan, but it is I will always be teaching, and I love setting up platforms to help teach people and more so groom them up to be where they want to go. The whole entrepreneurial space is where I feel I've been called to. But so I don't have a specific exit plan at this point. Things have been in transition and whatnot. I will say this, I would like to be like this lady <laughs> and not work as many hours. What you guys didn't hear is Josie actually said, never gonna happen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have to just talk to that dean of the University of Minnesota. <laughs> Anyways, good question. I saw other hands. I'm going to grab Judy if that's. Okay. I wanted to go back to where some, I think a lot of us struggle, and Brian knows what I'm going to say. I I can't put numbers. He asked me when we did the ex our executive meeting. He asked me, what do you, he, he, he said that basically I can see what I want to do, where I want everything to be, but I can't put it in numbers. Okay? That's where the roadmap really um, cleared a lot of that up to be able to, to sit down and do. He told me how to figure things out. And I have a bachelor's degree in business and I could not figure this out. So it's, 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 it's sad. I'm sorry, teacher. I really did good. But yeah, I think that going back and keeping it up with keeping the roadmap current and rethinking about it and having your meeting and that cleared up a lot, cleared up a tremendous amount of, because that's, I, I'm running around like a chick on my head cut off. I didn't know. Judy? <laughs> Judy, do you have a question? <laughs> it's a statement. It's a statement. So shall I kind of... Um, okay, since I was party to that conversation, chasing a chicken with the head cut off, uh, <laughs> I think we could kid with each other. But what I was asking Judy is, where do you want to get? And you know, if you know where you want to go, what is it going to take to get there? And so there are certain things that it takes, like the amount of hours, the number of sales, the uh, number of dollars, they're all quantifiable. And so I was asking questions that were quantifiable. And when you don't know, 
Well, what can you say? You, you, it, sometimes you just have to wallow in it a while. You have to. That's why I like Amazon so much. You don't know what your niche is? That's okay. Just go start selling stuff. Retail arbitrage, it's great. Just throw a bunch of stuff out there, and you stumble over something. You say, hey, I like this, and I want to do more of that, and that's working for me. And that's, that's totally okay. We get in here, and we don't know what our destination is. That's okay. Christina asked me, what's your exit strategy? I don't know what my exit strategy is, so it's... I don't know. It's okay not to know. Um, in full disclosure, I was thinking about the, I don't work 20 hours, or 20 minutes a day. No, I'm not at that level. Oh, 40, 40 <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think it's about two, two hours. Two hours a day, about 10 hours a week. Is about there. Like yeah, Sarah. she's about incredible. Already. Well, it's a choice, Anne, how you set <laughs> things up. She has been trying to coach me on that. I just want to. I just want to say, you know, what's the exit? What are you exiting to? Financially, completely, you know, free, and you want to pursue doing something else, perhaps. Um, One of these days, I'm going to sit down and and write the great American novel, but probably not in this decade. <laughs> I saw another question over here before I then Christine. go to Judy. Okay, Christine. Um, not so much a question, could I make a statement yeah. to kind of sum up a lot of the different questions? Because I'm physically dealing with it right now. So the, the thing about the millennials, or uh, my kids aren't really millennials, they're just, um, they're young, I think, what are they, X generation? Gen X. Gen X, yeah. Um, so, the thing is, is my business was was this big, and I was doing a lot of things, but nothing really was taken off because I I I got too big too fast and didn't really master all the things. But I already had everything invested and going, and I didn't want to drop those. I didn't want to stop that train. So I brought in help, but I also knew that I was building a legacy business with my for my family. So I thought, well, the best thing to do is to pull in my kids. That was, well, these, sorry. We got the accountant, the bookkeeper first because numbers and me, we just, yeah, anyway. So, um, so that was the first hire, but secondly was the kids. And I will tell you, you know, and I go around and around with my parents, well, you know, you can't, you know, you're not making enough to bring on people. And I'm like, well, if I don't bring on people, I'm not going to be able to go to the next level and make the income I need to make because I don't possess some of those skills. And so I did take that leap of faith, and my business has grown exponentially since then. The money not quite as much yet, but it's coming. And I have faith and vision that it's going to be there. So um, it, it's one of those things where, you know, Sometimes you, you have to know what you're capable of and when to bring in help. And so that's all I wanted to say. And, and it is working. And I'm thankful for it. Yeah. You know, um, I just want to come back to this whole thing. I, I mean, it, it's, it may sound crazy that I only spend a certain amount of time on my business, but I've been at it for a long time. And... It, it, if you think about the way computers work, I, I was a computer programmer and uh, analyst way back in the 80s. And I wrote some of Mountain Bell's first expert system AI uh, programs. And I learned a whole bunch of different programming languages. And there's a language called Assembler, which is about as close as you can get to the, the computer itself. And <laughs> and so there's uh, here you have this language that is every little tiny uh, little tiny piece, and then on and on top of that you have built there's another uh, another language where you have built um, a, a program where you can say you can push a button and say print, and that program fires and it talks to the lower level and then the process happens. And the, 
the number of man hours that went into building that that little piece that says print, there are a whole bunch of man hours that go into that. And then on top of that, there are a whole, because print isn't the only thing that you want to do with a computer, there are all these other little program pieces that are built together, and each one of those has taken man hours after man hours. So there are millions upon millions of man hours behind our being able to sit down at a PC or a, or a Mac and do anything. And it's the same kind of thing in terms of building where you can say, okay, I only have to work 20 minutes a day because in the, you know, I came into the business saying, you know, I'm at this point in my life, I'm 70 years old, and I know that I, my body isn't going to run forever, and I need to set this up in a way that I can do it in, with the least amount of effort. So I'm building the print piece, and then I'm bu building the this piece and the that piece, and, that, and it all fits together. But there have been all these layers of building this up, so it's not something that's happened overnight. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we have the e-commerce masters intensive because of these millions of hours Lisa has said it's unbelievable what Josie has created when she saw your system she's like this is unbelievable and so I do not have this background but do you kind of start to see why she has it reduced down to 20 minutes that's what and you two are in the Commerce Masters Intensive on Monday. That is what you're taking advantage of. I don't have that. I didn't learn that competency. You have that through Josie and Brian, and Josie's unique talent of that background of programming. I, I've never taken a lick of programming. It sounds like a disease to me. <laughs> so, it, I mean, I leave that for other people from different planets. Not the planet I'm on, but so to me that's super advanced, but that is, is that massive shortcut. Okay, yes, Darlene. Yes, I'd be interested to know um, what types of financing methods you guys have used to, I guess, to generate that's additional capital for your businesses yeah, along well, the way. Yeah, yeah plastic. Duh. It's really true. <laughs> um, I've had one loan from Amazon, I think, and I've had two loans from, um, what's the name of that other? Cabbage. Cabbage. Yeah, and then I, I have a line of credit from my bank. So um, I, I'm not dipping into that now, but I've dipped into it before. You know, what I need it for is inventory. I haven't had to put out money for inventory for a while now, so I haven't needed that. Print yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I started with a $3,000 limit on a credit card, and that was it. Um, and um, then I have also had Amazon loans. Um, I had one cabbage loan. Um, in, um, I've used Square uh, with the uh, with the uh, the F uh, FBA fulfillment piece uh, because that we bill all of our customers through Square, so we'll, Square will give you a loan that way too. And I've had a line of credit, but I don't like to owe <laughs> anything, and I think that when I think that um, in a retail business, that that inventory piece uh, very often does require that you have some additional capital at some point. So I don't feel bad about that, but I'm very careful about paying it off. So I go through, I may take a loan getting into Q4, but boy, after Q4, it all gets paid off. Uh, same as Brian, plastic and line of credit. And we've been in multiple businesses from real estate to our windshield business to online marketing. 
and yeah, credit and uh, line of, pardon me, yeah, plastic and line of credit. And I gotta tell you, and, and Zach and I were talking about this when we went over to Starbucks, is talking about as an entrepreneur when you make that first investment and it puts a fire under your butt because you have invested into a belief that, hey, I'm going after this. And my whole, my three sons are all entrepreneurial, which the youngest I never saw, I didn't, I didn't see it, <laughs> I didn't see it coming. <laughs> but, but sure enough, he arrived. Wonderful. And I'm like, wow. You're talking the pregnancy? <laughs> <laughs> That's just mean. That's just mean. No, it's not that at all. It's, just, it's an investment. I'm like, holy cow. But a transformation mammoth because he, he invested. Um, but yeah, it over time, having done this many times over through multiple businesses, so those have been my two forms. Cabbage is more for Amazon people, right? Mm -hmm. Retailers, yeah. Honestly, I had no idea what cabbage was. <laughs> um, Do you don't know about radish either? <laughs> we gotta tell you about radish. <laughs> um, you know, it, I come from kind of a different world in that um, I know a lot of people who have brought their products to life using um, Kickstarter and those kinds of things. Um, I found an angel investor when I first started Bodabra. I went to somebody and actually somebody that I, I sort of knew and said, okay, I want to pitch somebody, this is what I'm doing, here's the numbers, this is why I think it's going to work, this is the ribbon industry, you know, these are the products that are out there, they don't work, and do you know anybody that I could go to to invest? And he asked me a whole bunch more questions and said, I will. And it, so it, there, you know, don't close off the fact of going and asking people, but make sure you really know what you're doing. Like when you're asking for money, make sure that if you had the money, you would spend it. I'm a believer that if I have the cash, I'm borrowing it from myself. Um, rather than, because my interest rates to myself are a lot better than what the bank's gonna give me. <laughs> um, on t on this on the another, I don't go to family or you know or friend. Like my angel investor was a an associate, not like a really close friend. I would never go to family and friends because you never, they, you know, all of a sudden when it comes to them, well, what? Why didn't you do this? And how come we didn't get that kind of money? And then it just can it it can be a mess. Um, on top of that, though, I get every time I go to PayPal and log into my account. Do you want a loan to support your business? Or, I mean, American Express, I must get every week a mailer or an email saying, you know, you're qualified for this much money and we'll lend it to you. I have a personal line of credit and that's my, or actually I take that back, I have a business line of credit and I never use it or rarely, but I have had to. And when, and it's fourth quarter when you're trying to bring in more inventory. So it's really a matter of, I, I like to advise if, make sure that you really believe that whatever money you borrow, you're going to be able to pay back and that you're confident. I mean, just borrow a little bit at a time. Don't, you don't have to go all in right away. Test the waters, do a little tiny bit. And that is what's allowed me to survive. So <clears throat> I have uh, probably a different answer than everyone else. Uh, I got scammed by this system called the university. And so uh, now I have a whole bunch of debt from that. But, uh, well, it's actually going down pretty quickly. But anyway, that being said, when I went and started my business, I went into it with the mindset of why would you start a – like, well, I was in college whenever I started my business. So I didn't really have money. I, I was already in debt from school, so I, I wasn't going to go – get in more debt to go start my business. So I firmly believe go sell, uh, go sell something first and then create it later. So I had my first contract for a thousand dollars a month before I even had a business bank account. And then the, that very day when he was ready to sign a contract, he's like, Hey, do you have your contract? I'm like, Oh yeah. Um, actually I have a guy looking over it right now. So 
I literally went and went online, went made the contract, and I was like, here, here you go. That next Monday, he signed it, and he wrote it out to my company name, which was not even a formal company name. And then I went and got my DBA, and then I went and got my business bank account and checked the thousand, uh, and uh, went and put the thousand dollar check in the bank, the bank account, and that was my line of credit per se going into my my business journey. That was about four years ago. And uh, ever since then, like I don't, I don't really spend money. I don't have. I, I do have credit cards, uh, but mainly for like I only have them. I only spend money on the credit cards that I already have, and I pay it completely off before the uh, the statement balance ends. Uh, I really only do it for perks. So it's it's paid for some a couple flights already this year. And um, but yeah, I, I don't ever have a balance on my my cards. So I don't really have a good answer to what you guys just said. You have a question? I would say if you're going to get a credit card or a line of credit, get in your business name. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Not your personal. Yeah. Get it in your business. Get that Very good card. advice. For those at home live stream, for your line of credit, get it in your business name, not your personal. All right. Hey, guess what? It's 8 o'clock. We're going to give it a wrap. Did you guys find this helpful and useful? Yeah. Good. Awesome. All right. Good. Love it. Okay, so you go rest your brains, get some good night's sleep, and we will see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow, and we go until 5.30. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, live streamers. Justin, did you need to say anything? Um, oh, for the general, um, we may for afternoon, which would be, we haven't talked, Brian, around... Right. Yeah, I think maybe around 4.30. Yes, we will live stream that tomorrow at 4.30. All righty. Thank you, live streamers. We hope you got a lot of value from that. This is awesome. Thank you, experts. All righty. Good night, everybody. Bye.